Is violence the language of man? Stay tuned to find out more. <laughs> Hello, Manalore here. So, what do I mean when I say violence is the language of man? I don't mean mankind, I mean man as in the male of the human species. And what I mean by that is there is the underlying subtext to communication between men, especially, and to some degree, all our inter interaction, but especially between men. It is understood, even if only at a subconscious level, that when we talk or when we interact, there are limits of tolerance of behavior and actions and words. And if those limits are crossed, there will be violence. Now this might seem primitive, but we have to realize that contrary to the humanist modern notion, human nature is human nature. It is the same from the day in which we wandered about in animal skins and fig leaves unto this day. Our nature does not change because of technology or the development in culture or society structure. These things only enhance or emphasize or de-emphasize different traits. So among the Greek philosophers, there was the traits of curiosity, of thought, of pursuit of knowledge. Among the Italian Renaissance, there was the emphasis on creativity, on art. Among the Britons and the Japanese, there was an emphasis on Stoicism. And yet, when it came to war, these two people could be downright brutal. They certainly got the job done. Because, ultimately, humans are humans, regardless of culture and of time period. It doesn't mean there are not significant culture traits between the various groupings of people, but the very basic elements of human nature are consistent throughout all time. And we can see this nature echoed in, or mirrored I should say, in the animal kingdom, particularly among mammals. If the male and the female are caring for the young, the male will always dominate the role of protection. And he's often built for that. And we can see that in the male of the human species. We are built not just to work, but also to protect. We have the upper body strength, we have the speed, we have the greater bone density, the ability to hyperfocus, etc. All of these things make us better at committing violence. Also, another aspect that, that I should mention, because I think this is very important, is the male ability to um, compartmentalize our mental faculties. So we can have a box designated for war or for violence. Whereas the female mind operates relationally, and so when she experiences trauma or violence, it affects every aspect in her life. And we can see this borne out today as we have more and more women in the military, especially in combat roles, and that they are developing PTSD at a much higher rate than their male counterparts. Because the female mind is not um, not just designed, but it's not its best functions and features are not equipped for those types of actions and environment. They are the nurturers and the life bringers. Men are the protectors and providers. And we can see this borne out too in the sexual nature of man. As I said before in many of my videos, the sex drive is inseparable from the male life force drive. And this is intertwined with violence. These are all inseparable. If you think about the nature 
a man from the most um, flowery romantic side to the most aggressive primal sexual side the male is the aggressor he is the pursuer in his nature of love making he is motion he's aggression he is dominance and the female is subservient she is receiving she is passive now i'm not speaking in absolutes i'm speaking in essence because of course it's such a complex dynamic of the sexual experience between a man and a woman there are numerous factors but what I'm pointing out is the consistency of the male nature and we can see this borne out in the fact that anytime we see groups of men or boys interact if you observe them there is an a obvious hierarchy and I will link um, a video about the social sexual hierarchy in the description but this is something that naturally occurs that we men are not naturally egalitarian we will assert we will form hierarchy in whatever group we are no matter how close or related or how much we like each other there will be a hierarchy we can see this borne out in essentially the dance if you look at animals when males fight generally speaking it is not to the death it's often not even to first blood it is to dominance who is the dominant who appears the biggest who appears the fastest the strongest the flashiest feathers and the same dance is practiced by men I mean one of the more obvious ones is the handshake I mean you know, certainly we've had plenty of times where we've shaken another man's hand and he has gripped it aggressively or hard because he is performing a ritual of dominance of asserting his position in the hierarchy and if you stop and you think about your interactions with other men you will come up with many many more examples of this another example of how this is established in human society is the institutions in which we overtly expect and tolerate blatant violence that is the military law enforcement any go um, armed government agency sports especially team sports hunting street gangs and organized crime we expect them to speak with violence obviously they're going to verbally speak and speak with paper but it is well known and understood that behind them is violence behind their action in each thing they do or say there is violence and we expect that in fact we form some of these institutions with that purpose and you say well, well how is sports part of this well sports is warfare for peace and in civil times it is the practice of war in an orderly and civil manner and if you think about the olympic sports which is some of the oldest sports on record all the original sports are military arts either directly or indirectly to actual warfare and that is the purpose of sports to keep soldiers in shape to busy young men in civil controlled and orderly ways to express violence in a safe space and so while of course i said street gangs and organized crime obviously that is not something we purposely sought after it's a but it's a natural occurrence in human society and it's kind of a side product um, both of those who would not obey and also today we can see it as a sign of the decay of our society which I'll get into later now of course that doesn't mean we all need to be warriors but because we've been able to establish a civil society that is stable and peaceful and prosperous at least in you know 
relative to much of history and the world, even though we are in many ways declining in some ways, we still benefit from that establishment by our forefathers. And so it allows us to specialize and anoint and appoint groups of men to practice violence on our behalf, like law enforcement and the military, and, and which allows other groups of men to practice other arts, such as farming, industry, art, science, etc. And by specializing, we are able to advance these different fields far more quickly and more efficiently, which is part of the key characteristics of advanced society. But that doesn't mean the farmer cannot be violent. He is caretaking his crops and his livestock, but just let a predator come along and you can see how quickly the violence comes back. Again, as I mentioned with the different types of societies, the different occupations are simply emphasizing or de-emphasizing different traits. They're all still there. And this is just a healthy part of society because if we were all warriors, the best we could hope for would be to be a nomadic raiding party of people. And that's the highest level of civilization we could hope for, and which is unsustainable, which is, you know, if we think about our history, this was part of the downfall of the Spartans. It's not a sustainable model. And even among these two different types of society, there was people who served other roles. So obviously it's important to have different roles. But that doesn't take away from the fact that violence is a key trait of a man. And we can see this when we look at boys. They, they're rough and tumble and they roll around and they beat, beat on each other and wrestle and they play things, games that are violent. You know, even if they don't have actual toy guns, they will find sticks. They will do. They will use whatever to imitate the manly arts, just as the girls will imitate the feminine arts. And that's natural and healthy. And we need to accept that this is part of our nature, and embrace it. And that's a, a, a very healthy thing to do. And we have, or I should say, in many ways, had institutions and pathways and vectors to channel this energy and drive in boys and young men like sports like the education system military law enforcement that would instill discipline build character instill loyalty patriotism teamwork etc so that they could channel that raw primal male force into the higher ideals of manhood to be not just the violent protector but also be the provider to not just work the job and make money but to provide for his household to build that house to provide for future generations in the past to explore new lands and climb mountains and today you still to find understanding to invent to build to protect this is all the same drive but it has become distorted today by the hydra i will call it and um which has many different heads and I'm running out of time so I'll have to get into them on a different podcast but they're distorting manhood and womanhood and childhood uh, marriage and family by many different vectors but I'll, I'll only probably have time to address a few of them because it's it, it gets into a wide variety of things But it's important to understand there is nothing wrong with this. And if you're a Christian, you can read your Bible and you can see 
most of the great men who are held up as faithful and good, including the man called Friend by Abraham, that is Abraham, the man called a uh, man after God's own heart, David, they were men willing to commit violence and even were called violent men. This is just part of our nature, and that is okay in its place, in its time, but it's also an underlying aspect of who we are as men. And we need to learn to channel and focus that to the higher ideals in our life to drive us forward, to build, to protect, to dominate our areas that we have been given charge over. And I will have to um, do another part or two <clears throat> to get into how this has been distorted and warped. Um, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the reply, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.